So my background is in, in, in medicine. I'm a medical doctor and, and teaching and, and, and doing research at the uh, medical school. Uh, and, and the title for, for today is, is, is a clinical trial, uh, a pharmacologically assisted uh, treatment on pathological gambling. And, and uh, uh, to do clinical trials, it's gambling. You don't know do you win or lose uh, uh, because uh, you are dealing with humans how good your hypotheses ever are you may end up on something different what you were expecting. Here are my disclosure. No funding from the uh, uh, gambling industry. All my funding is public funding, not even from th the pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, for the research. Okay, let's go uh, to the, uh, uh, where Finland uh, uh, stands in world gambling map. This is a little bit old uh, 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 work by, by Williams, and, and as he said, this is not kind of uh, comprehensive because in different countries, uh, the definition of problem gambling is assessed in different ways. So you cannot straightforward com compare this. Uh, but, but you can see something that we have some places where, where uh, uh, prevalence of, of uh, problem gambling is, is very high. Like, like in, in Hong Kong, uh, in Macau, uh, and, and uh, uh, in, in, in uh, South Africa and, and Singapore and so on. So Finland is, is somewhere in, in, in the lower part uh, here. Uh, this says that the prevalence of uh, uh, problem gambling in Finland is under 2%. So now we have a little bit more accurate numbers. Uh, on this I show you later. Uh, and uh, where we are, see, do we get the next one? This one, yeah. yeah. Jammed. Should I do something? Yeah. Ah, it's that one, yeah. Uh, let's try now. Yep, okay. So, I'm sure that you all know where Finland is, but in the case, so we are here uh, in, in, in Europe, Northern Europe, and, and our neighbors is uh, Sweden. Just in the uh, previous presentation, I was my Swedish colleague started her presentation on singing. Sorry, I cannot do that. I was asking my colleagues to give a dancing performance, but they did refused. So, uh, uh, but anyway, so we are very close neighbors, and have uh, also a lot of uh, collaboration in, in the, this field. Uh, but anyway, these two cities are probably the most farthest cities in the world to come here. Because when you start going here, you can go the other way, it's a uh, shorter way. And it's uh, uh, 11 uh, uh, plus 11, so 22 hours non-stop flying to come here. So a long way, but that was not the case way. Uh, uh, so uh, what how is the gambling in Finland? Uh, the, uh, it's controlled by the state monopoly. So a little bit sim uh, similar situation as in Sweden. Before we had the, the, uh, three different uh, 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 systems there, but now in this year they they will all these state monopoly systems will merge as a long one uh, a large uh, uh, state monopoly company. And, and, but the internet uh, uh, operators, internet uh, gambling is freely available. So there is no control on that. You don't know, need to either, even to register. And even though it's kind of state controlled, gambling is everywhere. This is a photo from McDonald's, slot machines in McDonald's. And I was very worried when I saw it last evening the, the uh, excellent film about the poke machines and how they are built so that they are really addictive. Uh, you don't even need to uh, get the money, but it's just addictive. And, and yeah, and the number of these uh, slot machines are increasing and increasing because this, even it's a state monopoly, uh, the aim of the company is to get as much money as possible. Uh, there is a one person in Finland who doesn't gamble, <laughs> for sure. 
uh, and and uh, 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 so he lives in Finland, not in Sweden, even Swedes sometimes uh, uh, try to say that he lives there, but he lives, you have to come, and you can come and see. He has a home there in the, in the northern uh, uh, Finland and, and he moves with the reindeers. And he doesn't gamble, the only person probably in Finland who totally not gamble at all. Uh, this one is in a grocery store in Finland, a big grocery store. And you can see all the uh, game operators here. So we, uh, here are the slot machines again, everywhere, just to normal grocery store. People go shopping. And Lotto is very popular. And here is the uh, uh, jackpot, 51 million euros. So it's a big money. It's a big money. OK, now we've got something. Let's try. OK, good. Uh, so what is the? more exact situation. Uh, uh, this says something here. Okay. Uh, so uh, the Finnish gambling has been monitored with population surveys uh, uh, for every four years since 2003. So we have pretty accurate situation. Uh, uh, what is the situation? And, and uh, so these are quite large population studies. Uh, about the same uh, 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 magnitude as, as the Swedes have done. And, and uh, uh, oops, sorry, going too fast. So we were here. Uh, uh, so this is the uh, past year gambling participation by age groups and, and uh, uh, 2011 and 2015. So last year, here is the number. And, and you can see that there is a slight increase, but this increase is not significant. And so this is, but anyway, it's 80% of the Finnish uh, population are gambling. They are gambling, doesn't say if it's a problem. Here is the uh, 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 problem gamblers. So but the probably pathological gamblers, because they are defined in our studies by SOX, uh, uh, is 1.3%. Um, problem gamblers too, so this means that uh, disordered gamblers are over 3%. But also risky gamblers, this is quite uh, uh, large numbers, 15% uh, of, of the, uh, uh, this survey uh, uh, tells that they are risky gamblers. So it's, uh, and uh, also here you can see that there is an increase, but the but, uh, uh, increase is not significant, but it's kind of steadily uh, going up the problem uh, uh, gambling. So let's go to today's uh, presentation. And, and, and first, a little bit background about the treatment of pathological gambling. Uh, gambling uh, uh, we all know that psychosocial approaches are, are the first choice. And, and I, uh, kind of the uh, uh, basic treatment uh, in the pathology uh, in, in BGs. But there has been several uh, uh, pharmacotherapies have studied uh, 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 if they could improve uh, the psychosocial treatment or just per se improve the treatment. Uh, many antidepressants and, and mood stabilizers and so on, so on, so on have been trying to, uh, not very su su successful results. So far, the most promising uh, 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 group of medicines uh, are opioid antagonists. Uh, and naltrexone and nalmefen are those uh, 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 pharmacological compounds there. I saw you a little bit more how they're acting if you are, when, if you are not familiar. So it, it has been shown that they reduce the symptoms of pathological gambling and, and increase abstinence for gambling. And, and uh, uh, there is uh, uh, research by, by Grant and, and, and by Bosco uh, showing that both Nalmefen and Nadrexone uh, improve uh, the results on, on psychosocial treatment and there has been also extended release of naltrexone so that it's kind of a, 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 a long-term uh, um, affecting medication. Uh, how these opioid antagonists, uh, how they could uh, 
uh, influence on, on what does the effects on, on gambling. So we know that, that uh, we heard yesterday that uh, dopamine is very important compound in, in, in uh, regulating uh, the uh, reward affecting uh, uh, mechanism in the brain. So pleasure of something, whatever is it. And, and we know also that endorphins, so they are opioid peptides, what the brain is producing itself. They mediate some of the gambling rewarding effects, uh, probably by enhancing mid-brain dopamine release, and this has actually has been shown by, by PET imaging. And we know also uh, uh, that these opioid antagonists, naltrexone or namefen, whatever they are, they suppress the effect of, of these endorphins. And, and thus they may, it's important that thus they may affect on gambling reward and compulsive behaviors and reduce the gambling. And, and to prove that this is really uh, uh, true, that this uh, uh, now, uh, opioid antagonist, nalmephenol, naltrexone, they uh, uh, bind uh, and, and uh, uh, have an effect here. So we have uh, here uh, on, on the uh, kind of normal situation when one person gets morphine and it uh, uh, binds to nucleus accumbens and is causing release of dopamine. And, and this person, uh, uh, got uh, uh, three hours before an, an dose of nalmefen opioid antagonist, and you can see it's almost completely, almost 100% uh, 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 binds to the receptors and, and uh, uh, suppress the release of dopamine. Well, but, but why, okay, if it's so promising, why, why they haven't been not used more widely? And, and uh, uh, the problem is, is that they also cause uh, uh, adverse events, and most common adverse event is nausea. So that means that the patients are not willing to take this medication. And, and uh, um, so we, and not only we, uh, the research has thought that one solution to increase the uh, naltrexone's usability uh, uh, in, in treatment of gambling or other diseases is, is uh, so-called targeted use or as-needed use. I will soon explain what it means. Uh, both these medications, so Nalmefen and Naltrexone, they have been used, and there are a lot of studies, many, many, many controlled studies in the treatment of, of alcohol dependence. And they have proven uh, quite useful. And very recently, uh, uh, there has been uh, clinical controlled studies with, with nalmefen on, on, on this targeted use. Uh, and and uh, 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 it has been shown to be very effective there. So it means that, that for, for example, for alcoholics, uh, the person is instructed take one tablet before drinking, one hour before drinking alcohol. But only in, in that case, not daily. Or as needed uh, is, is the other term used here. Uh, so either before drinking, one hour before drinking, or if there is a relapse, relapsing situation, if, or if the patient is craving. So that is the strategy for the as, as needed uh, uh, medication. And, and so we, we thought that this might be also a very useful strategy uh, for gamblers. And so uh, the normal dose for this medication is 50 milligrams uh, 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 for the treatment of alcohol dependency. And also the previous studies on the gamblers where the medication was taken daily. So on the previous studies, it was taken daily, every morning, 50 milligrams. And our, uh, in our study, the patients were instructed to take 50 milligrams, one tablet, uh, before gambling or when there was a, uh, a relapsing situation. Okay, and the aim of our study was naturally to develop something new, new method. Uh, but then there was also another interesting thing in our study 
uh, it's known on the uh, studies of alcohol dependency that uh, uh, so this medication binds to the opioid receptor and, and mu opioid receptor. And this receptor has uh, um, polymorphisms, so several different forms. And it has been shown in the treatment of alcohol dependency that one of these polymorphisms is more common in alcoholics and naltrexone treatment is more effective with one of these polymers. So we thought that it's very, very useful to also to look this on the gamblers. It's never before uh, done. There is not a single study what has been uh, looked, uh, what is the polymorphism of, of these mu opioid receptors in pathological gamblers. Okay, so we made a pilot study uh, just to see if the patients are complying and they were complying pretty well. So we decided to go on the randomized controlled trial. And now it's just recently published. Here is the paper. If you want to go, uh, go on closer uh, look, it's, it's uh, an uh, open access paper. You can get it there. Uh, here is a declaration of the study uh, on, on, so it was funded by, by, the, uh, 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 by the Ministry of Social Affairs and Welfare and no commercial uh, funding, all ethics and all trials uh, registration was done as uh, uh, said. But let's go here on the methods. So the uh, gamblers were treatment seeking gamblers. And, and there was a pre-screening first with socks, uh, uh, at least uh, more than five, and then was the final screening and the inclusion criteria for the study was over 18 years and, and, and pathological gambling as a diagnosis. The diagnosis was based on DSM-4. And uh, next exclusion criteria was uh, 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 acute hepatitis or, or if there was a severe depression. Uh, smoking was allowed and also concomitant medication. This, this study was, study period was quite long. So this was a long study, five months, 20 weeks. And, and uh, uh, the subjects, they had eight appointments uh, uh, with the research personnel. And the primary outcome uh, was, was uh, 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 craving for gambling. We used uh, 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 Yale Brown uh, 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 scale for that. Now I, I, I noticed that there is also a scale for just gamblers, but this is very commonly used on, on uh, studies uh, where craving is one uh, part. And, and uh, so that was the primary outcome. Secondary outcomes, the patients were keeping diaries, uh, money and time spent on gambling, uh, uh, um, and, and uh, quality of life, uh, use of alcohol, and, and also depression uh, scales. So, th sorry, this is very small. I just want to show, oh, okay, sorry. Is, is uh, now okay, sorry. I'm looking the wrong one here. So the, the, the uh, participants were instructed to take one capsule once a daily maximum, always as needed, uh, uh, and, and preferably be 30, 60 minutes before gambling. And, and in addition to this pharmacotherapy, all patients receive psychosocial support. So not exactly psychosocial treatment. And, and this psychosocial support was defined with the framework of Brenda. Uh, uh, if we have time, I can show on the end what, what this Brenda model means, but, but it uh, includes elements uh, uh, to uh, uh, um, increase the motivation and, 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 and enhance the scoping skills. And, and uh, as a patient treatment uh, uh, goal, uh, both uh, uh, abstinence or reduced gambling were accepted as a cause, what was probably one mistake. Uh, so this just to show the, that, that uh, uh, the analysis were done in, the, in intention to treat analysis. Uh, all patients were analyzed. Uh, completers were 30, 32 in both groups. 
and and uh, this just the baseline uh, of very uh, 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 gamblers like like uh, the normal baseline uh, uh, data just this is the important uh, bar to hear here to see here uh, the most commonly uh, 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 games were lotto and slot machines no surprise uh, uh, and this is the this is the the other part of the study so what is the genotope uh, of, of uh, uh, this mu opioid receptors in in these patients and and uh, we have recent before that we had uh, a large study where were normal uh, persons so we used them as a controls and 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 the different genotypes are aa ag or gg and 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 as you can see in here they the pathological gamblers do not differ from the normal population so that was kind of first result here so no difference uh, on on these opioid receptors compared to the normal population okay let's go to the uh, uh, results of the uh, study so the uh, as i said the uh, 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 severity of gambling towards urges uh, uh, measured by the U-box was the, the uh, primary outcome. And as you can see, uh, uh, in all groups, the gambling was, uh, so this is the group here, female, males, uh, either naltrexone or placebo. Uh, placebo is always the open. And, and there is a, a significant reduction uh, 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 Sorry, the visit is uh, wrong. This is, should be months here. So this is month four, so the end of the study. Uh, uh, there was a significant reduction in all groups, but no significant difference between the uh, uh, active medication and between the placebo. And, and uh, the same was here um, in, in uh, uh, if we put the genot genotypes here. So that was the other, actually, third part here. What we were looking for is there any association between the genotypes and the, the treatment outcomes? No, there was no uh, no difference. Uh, uh, whatever is is the genotype, uh, either placebo or naltrexone, so uh, uh, no difference. And uh, as I said, one problem why naltrexone has not been, or what is the problem with the naltrexone is, is the adverse events. And, and uh, 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 yes, we could see it also here compared to the placebo. Uh, just the total uh, uh, was not big difference, but uh, nausea and headache, what are the most common, are still occurring here. Even the patients are just taking it as needed basis. And, and you, uh, naturally, we were inter also interested uh, uh, how much the persons were taking the medication and, and uh, uh, so the, it, the average was about uh, uh, three times per week uh, and, and uh, in the beginning of the treatment and then it was reduced to twice per week and, and uh, 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 there was no difference what was actually important observation on taking the medication between placebo and, and active compound even there was a little bit more adverse events. So to summarize the study we can see that, that the overall treatment response was good. So everyone uh, significantly improved, uh, either on the primary outcome or on the secondary outcomes. They reduced the uh, um, money and, and time spent on gambling, uh, and, and also the well-being was in increased. Uh, uh, quality of life and, and, and uh, all the measures that we used. But there was no significant difference between the active and, and uh, 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 placebo group. And I think this was the important uh, observation. Uh, so pathological gamblers do not differ from healthy control in respect of the uh, uh, variation of opioid receptor uh, subtypes on the frequency distribution. And there was also no association between different genotypes and treatment response. So I think this is also important for the future things, so that you know one doesn't 
uh, start doing uh, treatment in, in, in this way because, as I said, uh, there is some association found in the treatment of alcohol dependence. Okay, study limitations, uh, okay, small, well, it's, it's uh, uh, relatively small, should I say, uh, and, and uh, uh, we could have uh, one more group, just uh, a group with, with uh, 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 psychosocial support there to get a little bit more information and, and uh, uh, also the participants were not randomized on the basis of the genotype that could give a little bit more information in respect of, of the treatment response. So, uh, um, conclusions. This is the first study to compare the effect as needed naltrexone in the treatment of pathological gambling and the possible role of, of the opiate receptor polymorphins in the moderating the treatment response. And we found no effectiveness uh, uh, of as needed treatment, naltrexone treatment. Uh, however, uh, everyone uh, uh, improved uh, 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 on the treatment. And, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, there was no difference on, on the uh, opiate receptor variation. Maybe a larger study should be done. This is uh, uh, just the team. Uh, there's a uh, to do clinical study. You always need a lot of people to do. And, and as I said, here is the paper uh, 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 what is published. And I think I used all my time. So I can uh, thank you and, and uh, uh, conclude that uh, maybe we had a chance we didn't lose or win in this study. Thank you.